Hi, I'm Mandy Beck. I'm a trainer here at Get More Math, but I'm also a former classroom teacher. I used Get More Math in my classroom and saw some pretty amazing results. In this webinar for experienced users, we're going to talk about some best practices as well as some new features to set you up to have a successful school year. So before we get started, let's talk about what our classroom setup used to be before we used Get More Math. So we probably all had a pretty typical day. In this case, we would be teaching a lesson. And after that lesson, we would have our students practice. We know the importance of that practice. We know that our students need to work independently to be able to show that they understood what we taught that day. And most of the time, that practice focused, at least in my classroom, on just what we covered that day. I like to give a lot of practice problems on that particular skill or set of skills that we covered. So a lot of times I would have my students working on 20, 30 problems so that they could show that they knew specifically what I covered that day. And this was pretty successful. My students were pretty confident. They understood the lesson. They were pretty happy. And in my classroom, that environment was great. Happy teacher and happy students. Everybody's feeling pretty good. So we continue that process. We continue to teach and have the students practice throughout a unit. And at the end of the unit, we need to make sure that our students understood what we taught. So we give them that unit test. What do we all do before that unit test? Well, it's necessary. We need to make sure that we review. So we spend lots of time coming up with fun ways to get our students to engage with that content that they might not have seen for maybe a week or two weeks or maybe even three. So that's when we start to see that, that shift in our classroom where it's not such a positive environment. Our students are confused. They forget. They start to feel down. My favorite was always being asked, did she even teach us this? So the environment completely changes, and the reason why is because the kids forget. They can't remember the content that was covered a week ago, two weeks ago, sometimes three weeks ago. It's hard for them to remember because our focus each day was to have them practice the content that we covered that specific day. And from there, it just becomes a stressful environment. So our students are stressed out because they don't remember how to do those problems. And we're stressed out because we know we taught that content. We know the students did really well on the day that we presented it to them. So it's just not a good environment. So we have this common struggle. How can we teach and actually get our students to remember the skills that we want them to remember? How can we actually make the math stick? And in my classroom, Get More Math was a huge help in getting my kids to actually remember that content. So when we're looking at this model, our creator, Josh Britton, also had the same dilemma. Short term, it was working great. His students were showing that they understood that the particular lesson that he covered that day. But that long term just wasn't happening. The kids weren't retaining the information. So he knew that there needed to be an adjustment. So we took that model and a little bit of an adjustment. We still have that lesson. So the teacher is still engaging with the students, um, coming up with activities, fun ways to teach lessons to teach that specific lesson. There's still a practice on that content through what we call the assignments. But that powerful piece, that extra piece, is that mixed review where the students are going to continue to work with that content throughout the entire year. So let's focus first on talking about assignments. So assignments are where students are going to show their short-term understanding. Um, it's really important that we want to focus our students on understanding the content that we covered that day. And in this case, it's our students' opportunity to be able to showcase their initial understanding of those skills. So as an example in Get More Math, this is an example of a good assignment. This is where the students are getting that targeted practice on the skills that I really want them to understand from my lesson that day. So you'll notice that there are not very many skills on the screen. So this one has three specific skills. And I only have an assignment goal of nine. So once my students get nine points, getting those problems correct on the first try, they're going to bump into mixed review. So remember that targeted practice. Really want to make sure that we keep small so that our students have an attainable goal. So just some guidelines in, in order to keep those assignments small. We encourage you to keep it at three skills or less per assignment. So it makes it a much more attainable goal and it really targets those specific skills. Another suggestion is that we want to keep it at three points per skill. You'll notice that whenever you create an assignment, that's the default. 
because that is where the students can officially show you that they have an initial understanding if they can earn those three points on each skill. So this is the problem that I had when I was starting to use Get More Math in my classroom is I was still thinking the old way of I really want my students to practice a lot of the skills that I covered that specific day. So this would be an example of what my assignment would look like. I'd go through that skill bank and I'd find all kinds of skills that covered what I wanted. So I went ahead and picked five skills. I was really stuck on 20 points. and I'm not sure why, but I really liked my students. I would like them to do 20 problems. So I would adjust it so that they would have an assignment goal of 20. And one of the things that I forgot was 20 points and get more math doesn't mean that my students are only seeing 20 problems. That means that they have to get 20 problems correct on the first try. That may mean that they're seeing way more than 20 problems, which is a little bit different than if I were to hand them a worksheet. So this was just way too large. So I had to rethink how I was giving my assignments to my students. So instead, maybe as an example with this particular skill, I went ahead and picked two of those five. I'm going to go ahead and save the, th the other three for tomorrow. I'm going to leave my points per skill at three, keep it at that default setting. And now I have an assignment goal of six. So this is a much more attainable goal for my students to be able to reach. So they're not instantly frustrated. More importantly, they're going to be able to get into that mixture view. And one thing that I, even though I knew I really struggled with, was that those two skills that I just assigned to my students are automatically built into mixed review. So yes, they're getting that targeted practice within those six, six points that they're going to earn in their assignment, but they're also going to be focused in those problems when they hit that mixed review. So those problems are not going away. They're still going to be seeing them in the mixed review part. And I, it took me a little while before I finally caught on to that, that even though they're not in the assignment anymore, they're still going to be working with those particular skills. Another thing we know is really important is that guided practice. We want to set our students up for success and we actually have two new options that are going to make that a little bit easier for you to be able to provide that guided practice. The first is through what we call the full screen button. So the full screen button you are going to see essentially anywhere that you can cycle through sample problems. So one place would end up being any time that you preview, preview skills in the bank. So you have the opportunity to look at samples, look at their answers, cycle through, and right there is that full screen button. So if it's easier for you to focus, you can pull up the full screen button, cycle through a bunch of problems, and make sure that's definitely one that you would like to add. Or maybe you want to pull that problem up and go over it with your students as a class. Another place that I really liked using it was whenever it was in assignments. So in assignments, I can go ahead and create my assignment. And what I can do is I can use that full screen button and I can go through each of the different problems that I have set up in that assignment, go through different example problems in each, each different skill so that my students were set up for success. Another instance that I always use it, and I'm sure you've been in those scenarios where you feel like you're answering the same question over and over and over again. You go to one student and they ask and the next student is asking and the next student is asking. So I would go ahead and have them say, okay guys, go ahead and, and devices down and eyes up here. And I would actually go to the mixed review report. So I'm going to go ahead and show you just so that you have a feel for what that looks like in the teacher app. I'm going to go ahead and click on mixed review. And again, I have the option to pick any of these skills that I want, but let's say that my students are really struggling with this particular skill. So I can go ahead, again, I have my kids have their devices down, eyes up here. So when I click on that, right there is that full screen button. And when I click on it, I have the opportunity to go through example problems with my students. I can see the intended answer and we can cycle through a bunch of these until my students really seem to understand the concept a little bit better. So from there, it's very easy to pull that up, go through it, cycle through some problems so that my students have a better understanding of that skill. And then I can say, okay, device is back on and you can get back to work so that I'm not, again, continuing to answer those questions over and over and over again. So again, that full screen button is a great way to provide that 
guided practice to your students to set them up for success before they practice, but also a great way to throw in some remediation. Maybe you need to go over something as a class so that your students can move forward. Another really cool option that we now have available is called the preview button. So the preview button is only available within an assignment. So in this case, you're going to see that preview button right next to the assign button. And whenever you click on that, it's going to open up a new tab and you're going to be able to experience exactly what your students experience when they log in and work on this particular assignment. So this gives you a great way to be able to practice prior to even giving them some guided practice on their own because you're going to have the opportunity to see how the app interacts with different ways that you answer or how to graph, that's always a big one. Another great thing would be to pull this up and go through it with your students because they're gonna have the opportunity to see what happens when you input certain things. Another great thing to think about is penalties. Showing your students how penalties work, how they accrue penalties, how they can get rid of them and continue to move forward. So another great way to be able to show your students exactly how the app is going to act as they as they are working on it on their own. Again, setting them up for success and making sure that they're ready to go. So when you assign that, you want to make sure that you have your classes set up. So I do want to share with you that we do have a new class enrollment link that's going to make it easier for one, you to have your students enrolled in your class, and two, it's going to get your students working pretty quickly and into that app to be able to start working right away. So let's go ahead and take a look at what the class enrollment link is going to look like. So in the teacher app, I'm going to go ahead and create a class, just call this period three. And when I pick my subject and I click on the next, Another new feature is that we now have something called a mixed review starter bundle. So this will give you problems already in your mixed review and they're set up so that they're pretty easy and the students are, will be able to answer the questions, but it gives you a starting point. The students, as soon as they log in, will be able to start working even if you don't have an assignment in place yet. And it gives the, uh, the kids, if, especially if they're new, an opportunity to learn the system. So you do have the opportunity to look at the problems, cycle through, there's the full screen button again, and if there's any of them that you decide that you don't want to use, you just click off of them and you can click done. So you'll notice as soon as my class is created, the roster page looks a little bit different. So I now have the class enrollment link but I also have the option to add my students manually. So if you would rather add your students manually by searching for existing students or creating new accounts, you can still do that there. But the link is going to give you a much faster, easier way to get your classes rostered as well as get your students working. So all you have to do is copy that class link and share it with your students. You also have the option to take a look at what that's going to look like at their perspective. So if I click on that link, I'm going to get to my welcome page. If they are brand new, they're going to click the get started button and they can go ahead and fill out their information. As soon as they click create an account, they're instantly rostered in your class and they're instantly bumped into the app where they can start working. Likewise, if they already have an account, they can just use their username and password and as soon as they hit log in, they are signed up for your class, so you're going to see them on, on their class roster. And they're going to be working automatically in that mixed review environment. And you do have the opportunity, so as time goes on, if you realize maybe your students aren't using that appropriately, if you go to the roster page, once you have your students there, you do have the opportunity to turn that link off. So they will no longer be able to create their account using that link. You also have that option in settings. So right underneath that class enrollment link, you can choose to either turn that on or turn it off for your students to be able to create their accounts from the class link. So again, in an assignment, we have that targeted practice. So we have small assignments. We want to make sure to keep them an attainable goal for our students to be able to show their initial understanding. When they hit that mixed review part, that is where the students are going to get that cumulative practice. So one thing to keep in mind, again, what I really struggled with is that those three skills that I specifically assigned in my assignment are also going to show up in that mixed review. So they're still going to continue to practice those specific skills, even in that mixed review environment. 
So the power of Get More Math is in that next review. So in the assignments, our students are going to be able to show their short-term understanding, but those long-term gains are really going to come from that mixed review. This is where the students are going to get that cumulative, individualized, prioritized practice that really helps make the math stick. So we know that that dollar sign is really important because that is where the students are going to be able to earn points. And we know that the dollar sign is prioritized for every single student. It's individualized so that they are specifically getting practice that they need. So one student screen is going to look completely different than another student screen because it prioritizes that practice for each individual student. So how exactly does that dollar sign individualize? Well, if it ends up being a skill that the students are new to or they're still kind of working at understanding, they're going to continue to frequently see those as dollar sign problems. And the goal is that they are building that mastery. Well, what happens if they've already mastered a specific skill? So they've done well with it and they've done well with it, well, well with it over time. That's when they're still going to occasionally see dollar signs. So those problems are not going to go away because we want to maintain that mastery that they've been able to show. So we want them to be able to do it well today, but we also want them to do it well in three weeks, in three months from now. So it really helps them to continue to maintain their mastery over time. So as a new feature to really focus on those dollar sign problems is something called dollar sign only mode. And every time you create a class, the default is that your students will be in this mode. And just as it sounds, this is a mode where the students are fully going to be focused on only being able to work on dollar sign problems. So in the past, this would be what a mixed review screen would look like for a student. Just a little bit different when dollar sign only mode is on. So probably the first thing that you notice is that you have some faded squares. So those faded squares are those problems where the students aren't able to earn points. So unlike in the past, when students click on those specific skills, they're going to get a message that tells them they may only work on skills that are worth a point. And again, remember those dollar signs are prioritizing that practice for each individual student. So it's really focusing them to work on those problems that they specifically need. Now, when you're thinking about this, you're probably like, well, I liked it when my students were able to work on some of those other problems. If that is the case, then you do have the opportunity to turn that on so that the students can actually work on other problems. So if you go to settings and you go about halfway down, you're going to see an opportunity where you can allow the students to work on problems that are not worth a point. So if that is the case and you want your students to be able to have that opportunity, you can turn that on. But again, the default is that they're not going to be able to switch to any of those problems that are not worth a dollar sign. And it really focuses them on prioritizing that practice. And keep in mind, they can still move around between the dollar sign problems, so that still gives them an option. But again, the beauty of that mixed review is it really focuses them specifically on that content that they need. So it takes that guesswork out of it and does that for you. So now we talked about some best practices, it's also good to talk about how exactly do you know how your students are doing. So there's various ways. One of my favorite ways was to monitor my students in real time using that current status screen. So when I look at my classes tab and I go to current status, I can easily see what my students are working on. I can see how many points each of them have got today. Something that was super, super quick and visual was that time since correct. I knew that if any students had a red, had a red time, it was time for me to go over and, and check in and see what was going on with them. Another great feature was that help order. So it takes the guesswork out of figuring out who had their hand up first. And I really liked the fact that I could go ahead and click on a particular student and I could see the current problem. I could see the answer that it was supposed to be, so we could kind of work it out together. I could send them a message, I can give them a, a game credit for encouragement, and then there's that replace problem button. So yes, the replace problem button does exactly what it says, it's going to replace the problem, but just as a, a heads up, one way you can actually help students that I, I called it falling into the penalty pit, so if they end up struggling with penalties, if you click on that replace problem button, it's actually going to wipe their penalties out and kind of give them a fresh start. So I never told my students that that was an option, 
but it was kind of nice to see their reaction whenever they were just kind of feeling down about the amount of penalties they got and how many problems they were going to have to get to get out of that penalty pit. Clicking that button kind of gave them a fresh start and allowed them to, you know, ask for help in order to be able to move forward. So that's a really cool feature I just wanted to make sure that we talked about. Here I also have the opportunity to set my daily goal. So in terms of setting a daily goal, it's a good idea to make sure that you set one before the end of every class. And when you're trying to figure out what number to use, just as a rule of thumb, one suggestion would be to either double or even triple what your assignment goal is. If you choose to do that, that's a great way to ensure that your students are getting points both in the assignment and in mixed review, because you want to make sure that your students are getting some points in mixed review as well. But you may notice that your students are really doing well one day, or maybe they're struggling, so that is an adjustable number that you can d adjust depending on how your students are doing. But you do want to make sure that you're setting a goal that is having your students earn points that are both in the assignment and in mixed review. And if you notice at the end of class that you have some students that haven't quite made it to mixed review yet, quick and easy, go ahead and hit that switch to mixed review button. Get everybody in the last few minutes of class working in that environment. So again, they're getting that individualized prioritized practice that really helps them understand those concepts that they've covered throughout the year. The other really cool feature about Get More Math is the colors. So we now know, we've talked about it, the fact that those assignments are that brief focus practice on that new material. So what I just covered today, I want my students to be able to show that they have an initial understanding. Color-wise, I just want to see that shift from a red to a yellow. So if I see that shift from red to yellow, then I know that my students have that initial understanding because that switch happens after they get three correct on the first try. From there, in that mixed review, that's where they're getting the cumulative prioritized practice. This is where I want to see those long-term gains. So color-wise, I want to see those greens, silvers, and golds. So as far as the, the color ratings go, red is where students are going to start off. So every single new skill is going to be red. So that's considered to be a beginner. I want my students to get three correct answers on the first try. That's going to switch them into yellow. That shows that they, are sh they have some progress, they have some understanding. That initial understanding is there. And that's great. That's the highest that they're going to get on the first day. But I don't want to stop there. I want my students to have this understanding over time. I want them to be good at it, excellent, amazing. So that's where I want to see those green, silvers, and golds. I want my students to be able to officially show me that the math is sticking. More importantly, that's where proficiency is coming into play. Another cool option that you have is to provide some targeted intervention to your students. So let's say you are getting ready to start a new unit and you realize that your students were struggling with some really, really important skills that are going to set them up for success in this new unit. So I'm going to go ahead and target those three specific skills that I really want my students to work on. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Mixed Review. And I'm going to focus on those three specific skills. I look at my proficiency level, and it's pretty low, and I know those are three skills my students are going to need to be successful in that next unit. So I can easily create an assignment from those three particular skills and assign it to my students, have them work on those in order to continue to build their mastery of those concepts before delving into that next unit. So all I have to do is just click on each checkbox next to those skills. I'm going to click on the Actions button. And there's my opportunity to go ahead and create an assignment of those three particular skills that I really want to focus my students on. So I can just go ahead and give it an assignment name, save it, and assign it to my students. Have them work on it, build their mastery so that they are set up for success for that next unit. The amount of data at your fingertips is phenomenal. And you look at it from, from various different perspectives. One way is to look to see exactly how your class is doing as a whole. So again, you're going to go to that mixed review report, and you can click on any one of those skills that you have assigned to see how your students are doing specifically with that skill. So if I click on the second skill, and I open it up, I'm instantly given a quick snapshot of how my students were doing, what percent were proficient, how their accuracy going, and specifically how many students were falling within each color category. 
but I can even go further. I can go ahead and click on that proficiency tab and I can see what specific students might be struggling with this skill. So easy small group. I'm going to go ahead and take a look and split my students into these two groups. So those ones that are those reds and yellows that are still building their mastery, I'm going to go ahead and have them work on this particular skill. And my students that are green, silver, and gold, I'm going to maybe give them a different skill to work on, or they can just continue working in mixed review in order to maintain some of that mastery that they've, they've acquired. I can even go down further and look at the student level. So if I go to student data, again that gives me a list of all of my students in my class, I can click on any one of my students and I can give, be given a huge amount of data that they're going for or I can also look at the snapshot of the colors. I can easily see how this student is doing by looking at their color ratings. So I can see they only have one skill in red and four in yellow and the rest of their skills are in green, silver, and gold. This indicates to me that this student is doing fairly well because there's only really five skills that they really need to continue to build that mastery for. So they're either really struggling with it or maybe they have just an initial understanding. I want to see that long-term retention. I want to see those green, silver, and gold. And this student is doing pretty well overall. There's a lot of green, silver, and gold skills that they have. And I can go further. I can look at each specific skill this student has worked on. I can see their color rating, their accuracy, and how they're doing. So it just the amount of data that you have at your fingertips is great. It's super helpful to be able to see exactly how your students are doing and remember that you're seeing it in real time. Benchmarks, they give you just that snapshot. This is long term. You can see how your students are progressing throughout the year. So just to recap, three steps to green and growing. One, make sure you're providing that guided practice before independent practice. Again, you now have the opportunity to use the guide or to use the full screen button and the preview button to be able to give that guided practice. And remember to keep those assignments small. We want it three skills or less in each assignment and three points per skill because that's where the students can show that movement from red to yellow. It's really important to make sure that you're setting daily goals and when you're setting that daily goal before the end of class, make sure that you're including assignment points and mixed review points. An easy way to do that is just to make sure that you double the assignment points in order to ensure that mixed review practice. But again, that's adjustable based on how your students are doing. Just make sure that you push them to mixed review before the end of the period. This is where they're going to get that spiraled, individualized, cumulative practice. So it's really, ensure, really, really important to ensure that your students are working in mixed review every day. This is where it's really going to make the math stick. So I do want to take a few minutes and see if I can address any questions that you may have. All right, so it does look like we have a question. Can you please explain penalties? Sure, so I think the best way to do this is to go ahead and log in as a student. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in so we can actually see what this looks like from the student perspective. All right, so your students are going to be able to earn penalties on any multiple choice or bimodal question. So in this case, the problem I'm currently on is multiple choice. When the students first see a problem, they're not going to earn penalties. It'll work just as it did before. But once they have an initial understanding and they've shown that they have some understanding of what that specific skill is, is working towards, they do have the opportunity to earn penalties and the goal is to get them to not guess. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and just get this question wrong. So I initially had an understanding of this skill previously and I've now earned a penalty. So the penalty is going to pop up and tell the student. So now I have to be careful because if I answer this incorrectly, it is possible for me to get two penalties. The maximum number of penalties your students are going to earn are four. So when I say they fall into the penalty pit, that's what I'm referring to. If they get four penalties, that's the maximum number that they can get. But it can be discouraging, so this is when your students are probably going to ask for ask for help because they don't want to they don't want to continue to accrue those penalties. So if I answer this problem correctly, you're going to notice that I still have a penalty and I didn't earn a point. I still only have one point. So in order to get rid of my penalties, I now have to answer this problem correctly just to clear out my penalties and then I actually have the opportunity to earn a point. So if I answer this correctly, again you'll notice that my penalties have now erased but I still only have that one point. So now this is my opportunity. If I get this correct, I earn the point. 
if I get it incorrect, I'm going to fall back into those penalties. So it really focuses your students in making sure that they're answering those questions correctly and they're not taking that time to guess. So really, really helpful way to make sure that they're not just guessing through those multiple choice questions and that they're really focusing. And you're going to see that you get a lot of questions when the students get to those because they don't want to accrue all of those penalties. Good question. So I do want to be respectful of your time. We are at about the half hour mark. So I thank you for joining me and I also want to remind you that we are available to answer questions. You can email us at support at getmoremath.com. Also that 